Aloha. I'm gonna do some more David Lindley. It's cause he's well worth it. Try and get through to somebody new. Check him out. Bring you in. So um yeah, we'll do Ain't No Way off the first El Rayo X album. Another one written by Bob Frizz Fuller. And the, the little bit I could find online about him, which wasn't much, but there was like some appreciations from when he died, I guess, and stuff. People who knew him. Pretty strange cat. And uh, he had a bunch of other nicknames beyond, besides Frizz. But uh, this one guy who seems to have known him well, he, they, he had apparently, I think it was out in Santa Monica where he lived, Santa Monica, California. And um, he had a piano, an upright piano in his house. And it was kind of seemed like a open scene out there at the time. And he tells a story about this Bob Frizz Fuller would just come into his house at like maybe even like two in the morning and go and sit down at the piano. It was like working out songs, writing songs, and uh, wouldn't would go to the piano, play and leave, and there might not be any interaction. <laughs> so, just an eccentric dude. But anyway, and uh, David Lindley was as well. That's why I'm wearing the Hawaiian shirts last week and this week. David Lindley didn't necessarily wear Hawaiian shirts, but he wore a lot of, uh, what was he, they call the Prince of Polyester. He'd wear a lot of leisure suits and stuff, leisure suit inspired sort of ensembles. So this is Ain't No Way. stop it there ain't no way they, the, the, the Kamaka H string got this on reverb nice 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 ukulele sound the guy at uh, the Polynesian Hotel at Disney World Alika kind of, you know became friendly with them somewhat you know he would call me out when I showed up and I'd go there sometimes just to see him and I actually played a song at uh the Polynesian Hotel, Hula Hula Girls by uh, Zevon. And uh, I remember uh, the line in there, I didn't have to come to Maui to be treated like a jerk. <laughs> so in in uh, something, the sort of thing I would always do to kind of endanger things, I changed it to I didn't come to Disney to be treated like a jerk. People clapped at the end. But it was on a, on the uh, PA system, so it was heard. And it's all in good fun, folks. You know, you got to poke the bear all the time. That's that's what it's all about. It's amusing, and there's it, it, nothing to get upset about ever. 
You know, it's not that sort of thing. So we're going to go through the, the David Lindley um, CDs. And funnily enough, here's here's my box. This is the, the David Lindley stops like right there. These are Warren Zevon. A couple of them are in the car right now. But um, I have like two of every David Lindley CD. <laughs> I think a couple of them I bought, maybe I was on the road used and i think sometimes when you're at the gigs to get him to sign some something you might have to buy one but this is his first group kaleidoscope this was uh 67 late 60s 67 this one i just got recently it's a three cd set of all of his kaleidoscope material or at least the uh the epic gears that's the first album side trips I had that a while but that's that's david lindley there in the early day it looks like mr bean rowan atkinson a little bit, but uh, and Chris Darrow's in the in the band, and I'm not even which sure who he is, but that's he married David Lindley married his sister. But then you get into you know all the way up. Then I believe in the '70s he made David Lindley was mainly in Jackson Brown's band and played with Crosby and Nash a lot, and Zevon. But then you got the uh, L. Ray Lex. classic album. This is the one if you're gonna get one. Start with that one. This one has everything. You know, she took off my Romeos. A good version of Bye Bye Love. And um, Mercury Blues, of course. And um, Ain't No Way. Tuberculucus and the Sinus Blues, which is kind of a take on rock and roll. I got the rockin' pneumonia and the boogie woogie flu. And Don't Look Back, the song Peter Tosh and Bob Dylan... Um, Mick Jagger did. That's kind of probably the weakest tune on here, in my opinion. Pay the Man, another good one. And I think that actually might be another Bob Frizz Fuller. Pay the Man. Everybody's got to pay the man. And in fact, go on YouTube. John Cruz, a, a well-known in Hawaii, a good, good, cool artist. There was a great video I watched last week with him and a couple of his brothers sitting on the front of this just a little patio it was like a benefit concert but just very informal and they do a good version of that he's a he's an interesting guy. only the only disappointing thing about john cruz is that he only has two cds and like the one they came out like in 99 and 2005 it's like come on dude give us some more music but um your old lady class i mean this is a great fucking cd man why I got two, in case I wear it out. Then you got the next one. <laughs> this is uh, Win This Record, I think. Yes, Win This Record. And this is this is good. You know, not as good as the, the El Rey OX, the first one was great, but this is good. And I tell you what was on here, if I could still read that small stuff. And then the third one, this was the third one. This is El Rey OX, and it is Very Greasy, which has his, his recording of <laughs> Werewolves of London is on here. This is Tiki Torches at Twilight's on this one. See, it's I can read that because it's better contra. Papa was a Rolling Stone, good one on that. Do You Want to Dance, you know, fun tune, everybody, Beach Boys, everybody's done that one. Gimme that ting, that's a great tune. Gimme that ting that the doctor told me to. Good little boogie tune. See, and the key with all this El Rey OX stuff is it's, it's upbeat. You know, there's humor and everything, and Lindley sings. He always kind of does these high voices and stuff. And then you got uh, these are this I got on uh, you um, either eBay or. Uh, the, uh, the, the other big one that stole the name from the jungle. They, they are the enemy. But uh, this is just a live gig, 1981, with El Rey OX. Now, these are official recordings. <laughs> and that's, uh, I think one of these maybe has a signature in it. No, maybe not. I thought I did. Something in here I got a signature on. And this was an official El Rey OX came out at the time. This came out like in the 2000, like way after the point. 
Great, great version of Your Old Lady on here, though. That's a great tune. Your Old Lady might be up there near my top favorites. Great riff on that one. And this is uh, Del El Rey OX Live. And that was the kind of the end of El Rey OX. Then this was his so solo album, Mr. Dave. See, and there's an example of his uh, clothing sort of type there. That's a good picture of him overall. Get an idea. And this one, this is the kind of the newest one I have, you know. And I remember talking to David about this one and him being like, I finally got the tapes to that album so he can put it out. Now, here's the most important one. This is the one I think I first got. I might have gotten that out the first El Rey OX, but this is the one that changed the game. David Lindley and Hani Nasser, live in Tokyo. In this one, uh, there was a review in the back of Relics. And, you know, and, and <clears throat> I don't necessarily... The key to the reviews for me is kind of the references you give to it. So there was just something about the way they worded that. I'm like, I'm going to get that. And you have to send away directly to David's website and to get this. And, uh... A, every tune on here opens up with Bonton Ruli, that great tune back from um, the guy who did uh, Route 92, which is a famous road along the kind of the southern shore through Louisiana and stuff. But he wrote, that's great, the Bonton Ruli, which means let the good times roll in, in French. That's on here, Ain't No Way, She Took Off My Romeos, Tiki Torches of Twilight, Mercury Blues. Play It All Night Long, the Warren Zevon tune. Great tune on there. You know, Grandpa pissed his pants today and he don't give a damn. Great tune. Great tune. Great album. And the, the warmth of the recording. You know, you're right there in the room. And of course it contains the song More Than Ava Braun, which is one of my all-time favorite songs and performances. It was written by Danny O'Keefe, but... I heard it first here, and in, in his version, Daniel Keith's version doesn't compare to this one. And it's just a funny song about Ava Braun, the girlfriend of Adolf Hitler, and uh, just you know he would have loved you more than Ava Braun. Kind of a put down of possibly some girl dumped you, you know. And uh, a broken heart is like a Nazi, and the Nazis love the blues. The Fuhrer that you have, the Fuhrer you have to lose. And he would have loved you more than Ava Braun. So, the key, the key to, to everything, to life and watching me, you need to have a sense of humor. So if me mentioning any of that, like Nazis or Adolf Hitler offends you, you're a fucking loser. Sorry, I have to get that way because I just know the way society is, so... And then this was the follow-up. Same thing, Hani Nasser. Not nearly. It, awesome. The warmth of the recordings. You know, you're right there in the room, and but there's some space. But, uh, you know, it didn't have... That one has, like, just all the, the best tunes. But this is good. Meat Grinder Blues is on here. The Meat Man. Call me the Meat Man. Just a lot of great tunes, you know. Of course, there's two. <laughs> I think one of these has a signature. I just saw, yeah, there. See, this one I probably got at the gig so he could scribble on it like that. And that's a, a self-portrait. Then, then we got the, then now Hani Nasser went away and, and David would always point out that he was a chief in, chief in like somewhere in the Middle East. Then you got Wally Ingram came in on drums. <laughs> I got two again. And there's Dave's shoes in Wally Ingram's. But good to... And th this was uh, cat food sandwiches on, on here, you know, Bon Ton Rooley again. I think this is live, so, you know, you're going to get some repeats. Then you got the next... Uh, this is another Wally. Got it signed there from Dave. Another classic. Waimanalo Blues, good tune from the Hawaiian scene. Because uh, Lindley was on an album by the uh, Pahanui Brothers, which is Gabby Pahanui's sons. 
that was kind of, I think around 1990, you know, Hawaiian sort of contemporary music. Pay Bo Diddley. Pay Bo Diddley. Because as you should know, but probably don't know, a lot of those dudes, like, Chuck Berry was pretty good about it, but like Muddy Waters and Bo Diddley, they just really got ripped off by the the music industry and the Chess Brothers and shit really fucked them. Made a lot of money off those guys, and Bo Diddley and them didn't. And then you got uh, this Twango Bango. This is a good one. National Holiday is a funny tune. Other signatures on there. National Holiday. Hey, hey, my, my, it's a national holiday. I think I didn't get the hey, hey's and my, my's right there because it should rhyme with national holiday. Let's all sing the national anthem. Free the hostages and pay the ransom. Triangle Bango 2, 3. So I guess the first one, I guess said, yeah, Twango Bango Deluxe, Twango Bango 2, and Twango Bango 3. Classic. Good stuff. Then this was the final one he came out with in his lifetime. It matches the... And of course there's two. <laughs> You can't have too many. But this is all studio recordings, and it's just great. Good stuff. Then you got this one here. This is a good one. More signatures. This was Ry Cooter and um, David Lindley, who were friends way back. I got two. But uh, this was live in the Vienna Opera, uh, Opera House. So you got half Lindley and half Ry Cooter. And Ry Cooter's awesome. If you don't listen to Ry Cooter's solo stuff, Going right back through the 70s till he's been releasing stuff. Major liberal, but still tolerable. Just fantastic guitar player. And this has just got a ton of ton of stuff on here that's just great. Yeah. Very, very good. And then there's also this. This this came out Jackson Brown with David Lindley. This was from like the 2015-16 sort of right in there. And Lindley does a couple tunes. He does, um, it's mostly, you know, Jackson Brown running on empty, take it easy. But Lindley does Mercury Blues in the song El Rey OX, which is really cool. That's very good. Another nice sounding. It's mainly acoustic. See, I guess David had a lot of problems with his hearing. So, like, as he did, he started these solo recordings or the duos, it was mainly acoustic instruments and uh, a lot of steel Weizenborn guitars, lap steel mainly, and a couple weird exotic Middle Eastern instruments, like this uh, tiny guitar he's got here, and it, the neck of the guitar actually goes like this, then the neck slanted back like that, and it's tiny, and he used to get some good drones and stuff, it's really good interesting stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. But he also did some stuff. There's some really good, cool, called, uh, I think it's Out of Time, or Time Out of Time, something. But anyway, these recordings, him and this guitarist, Henry Kaiser, from, uh, from San Francisco, they went to Madagascar. And they made these, uh, and I got this right when it came out. There ended up being three of them. I didn't know about the last two until a few years ago. But uh, just they recorded with indigenous uh, artists, you know, in singing in, in Malagasy. And uh, but they also did like like uh, there's like a version of I Fought the Law on there, you know. But the, it's just really interesting in those the individual artists like uh, I think Daguerre's one of them. Tarika is another one. The, they're really good. I actually listen to that stuff reg regularly. And that's one place, I think the top place I'd like to go, like exotic place, would be Madagascar. You got the lemurs, of course. So, very interesting. Out of time, I think is what it's called. Time out of... Something like that, yeah. But David Lindley and Henry Kaiser. And just one final side note. 
Like, I always was interested, you know, the Grateful Dead and their recordings, they played a lot at the Henry J. Kaiser Convention Center in Oakland. And I always found it interesting that Henry Kaiser had that name. But Henry Kaiser, I just recently watched a, a um, thing on YouTube about him. He was just one of the giants of American industry in the winning of World War II. Because basically his shipyards in, in in Oakland, in the Bay Area, he and he was personally responsible, or at least his close team, and I believe him, in coming up with just being able to produce ships at a rapid rate and just pump them out. Because that's how we won the war, folks, you know? Russia with the, just sacrificed millions of people and produced a ton of tanks. And we were able to outproduce. Germany just ran out of stuff, you know, thankfully. That's why they wanted Russia. They wanted to get that oil. But uh, that that's really just having the people in the production is how you eventually win these wars. So that's enough about that. But it's an interesting sidelight. But Henry Kaiser, another interesting. He, he, he's a, he's a, uh, put out one CD, kind of all dead covers. He's kind of a peripheral player to that dead scene. In fact, on YouTube, he, there's a nice, uh, he does a nice 30-minute salute to David Lindley with some unseen video footage from their time in Madagascar. Really cool. And uh, he's just a really, he's like, I believe he's involved, his, his day job is a, uh, he's a really smart guy. And uh, I think he's some sort of one of those biology, you know, something I can't even pronounce sort of thing. But a really interesting guy, but he's also very soft-spoken, you know, like like a new-agey sort of dude. And uh, So that's interesting. Check that out if you're interested in the David Lindley thing. Which I'll probably put in Henry Kaiser or something. So that's it. And uh, that'll probably wrap up. I'm, I just recently started playing She Took Off My Romeos, which I'll do later when I am really got it down. Although it's pretty simple. So that's that, man. David Lindley. Check him out. Good stuff. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you can. I'm trying to get to 50. I'm at 13. <laughs> After like two years. But I, So I can do live streams. Where I can just ramble on and maybe play songs. Maybe work songs out. You know. Just kind of go through the process of learning them and trying riffs and stuff. Because, you know, pretty rudimentary guitar player, but I, I like to think I can put together a song and just get the rhythm, you know, get a good rhythm chugging. So that's kind of what, what I've kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to be. It'd be nice, and, and it, you certainly don't want to say you can't get there, but, you know, just not going to be Jeff Beck, probably. There's a very good chance that that's not going to happen. But, but you know what I'm saying. You got to go. You still got to push yourself all the time. That's the key. If you're learning guitar or anything, it's good. Play, play songs you know well and love. And I've always just get it down. Get the chords down. Play it through. And then you can constantly add. Every time you play. Not. But you can always add more riffs in, and, and you always, even when you're just playing, you always want to push yourself to do something you couldn't do before. You know, that's kind of the key, you know, like, well, just a riff, a fast finger movement or something. So, peace out. Aloha.